Hey there creepy peeps and welcome to another Exhumed movie review. Today we're going to be talking about Dead of Night. Now this <laughs> came to me as a suggestion and I cannot remember who it was. <laughs> um, so the comment is definitely going to pop up in front of my face right now if it's not already. Um, really really sorry i couldn't remember who it was to say your name in the video but your comment is up here i promise anyways before i get into the review i want to say a quick thank you to my creepy patron peeps um, for your support of my channel if you want to find out the perks to being a creepy patron peep you can follow that link in the description box in dead of night um architect walter craig seeking the possibility of some work at a country farmhouse soon finds himself once again stuck in his recurring nightmare Dreading the end of the dream that he knows is coming, he must first listen to all the assembled guests' own bizarre tales. Well, first and foremost, this is an anthology. I really love anthologies. <laughs> Main character, Walter Craig, is going to the house for a purpose. Like, I love that he goes there and doesn't actually do any work. Um, <laughs> like, or even really talk about work. He just kind of shows up, like, you know, for this job or whatever. And then he just ends up just sitting in the sitting room and talking with the owner of the house and all of her guests about all the bizarre experiences that they've had because he comes in and it's, again, instead of talking about work <laughs> that he's here for, um, he keeps talking about how he knows everything that's about to happen with this encounter because he's seen it before in a recurring dream. So there's a few instances where he's like this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen and then this stuff ends up happening um and among the guests is a doctor a psychiatrist or a psychologist or something and he's kind of he's kind of the audience like saying like okay but do you really know what's gonna happen so he's kind of trying to debunk walter's story so all the other guests start chiming in in Walter's defense and saying like, well, you know, I believe him because this crazy thing happened to me. And then they go into their story that all kind of have supernatural or like Twilight Zone-ish themes. Speaking of the shorts, I liked how they all kind of had different feels to them, even though they're kind of, they're kind of of the same theme I guess they all have to do with very odd supernatural experiences a lot of them dealing with kind of like death or spirits or ghosts you know what I mean um, but they all were kind of slightly different and I liked that and the length of them was also really good like I felt like each story was like the exact length it needed to be it didn't feel too short or didn't feel like it dragged on for too long I also like <laughs> I just have to point this out because I really love self-reflective and self-aware movies um and i feel like that's something that's kind of recent like <laughs> um obviously with wes craven's new nightmare and scream that kind of jump started <laughs> this whole like self-reflective thing with movies although i obviously would not say they're the first self-reflective films ever um but i feel like <laughs> the farther back in time you go the less self-reflective movies you get and this one it's like not fully self-reflective but one of the characters has a little line that <laughs> totally took me by surprise because it was you know I felt like a kind of just like self-reflective like jab like hey we're in a movie and I don't have the exact line written down I can't remember what the exact line is but it's the owner of the house um and you know, Walter Craig has kind of told everybody that he's had a dream of this encounter and he knows what's going to happen. And the doctor is kind of shutting everybody down and suggesting they don't talk about this. And the, the owner kind of jokingly says like, like she's kind of saying, you know, like, oh man, I, <laughs> uh, and I was hoping to star in a supernatural thriller or something like that. Like, that's what she says. Like she, I know she says star in a supernatural thriller or supernatural something. Um, <laughs> and I thought that was like a nice little job, like, you know, just poking the audience a little bit like you're watching a movie. We're just making sure you're aware of that. Um, and I also, you know, I really loved the ending. Um, I feel like a lot of movies <laughs> around this time, like the 40s and 50s, a lot of them, especially like the more psychological ones, really rely on a twist at the end for their big scare. Um, <laughs> and even though like each each little short kind of had its own twists, 
the, we, of course we have the big twist at the end because working on the notion that Walter has seen all this happen before and he knows what's going to happen um, and mute it until the text says to unmute it if you don't want the ending spoiled for you although we've had enough time to watch this movie just saying at the very end of the film Walter does something very bad um, <laughs> He does something very violent, which I won't say. I won't spoil that part. But right before the movie ends, he wakes up. You could like, you kind of figured that was a possibility that that was gonna happen because he opens up to the guest that he's having a reoccurring dream. So it's a possibility that everything we're watching is part of his dream that he is having. Um, so that ends up being true. And then right when he wakes up, he gets a call about the job to go to. <laughs> To go to the house so you know and then the the movie ends right where you know like as the credits start rolling we see Walter driving up to the house and things like that so <laughs> we're like oh no it's gonna play out that sort of thing um so I liked it uh <laughs> I did like it it was kind of even though like in the back of my mind, I knew it was a possibility that that was gonna happen. I thought that was cool and probably a little bit ahead of its time. That was like a Inception, before Inception a little bit. It was like a dream within a dream. Like <laughs> he was dreaming of the encounter and all these guests telling their stories and then seeing their stories played out. Like that was, that was straight Inception. The only thing I don't really understand, which is kind of just a nitpicking thing is I don't understand why Craig wanted to kill the people in the end. Like the, his whole thing when he meets everybody, he's, he pretty much keeps hinting that he's going to do something very bad. Um, <laughs> and you don't really understand why. You never understand why. Like why, what, what motivated him to do that? Is he just crazy? Was Dead of Night worth it? Yes, I really enjoyed the movie and that's why I'm so mad that I can't remember who suggested it because I really liked this. Um, so thank you so, so much again for the suggestion. You hit the nail on the head. I loved this. I'm giving it a five out of five. I think it's really good. Um, and if you and if you haven't checked it out, definitely do. Um, this was one that I had never heard of. Like, I feel like I have like a list in my head of all like the older classic horror movies that I haven't yet watched that are well known that other people have watched and reference frequently but this was one I was just like never heard of it I looked at the poster doesn't look familiar <laughs> so I'm happy that this movie exists and I'm happy that somebody suggested it for me to watch um, it's like you knew me it's like you knew I was gonna like it um, on IMDB it has a 7.7 .7 out of 10 and on Rotten Tomatoes it has a 97% critic score and an 87% audience score so that's pretty good um, nothing on Roger Ebert uh, if you want to watch Dead of Night you can check it out on Amazon video I'll leave an affiliate link in the description box there's no pressure to use it but if you do watch it on Amazon on using that link helps the channel so if you've seen dead of night let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it as always you can find me on all the normal social media places the links for those are in the description box also um, you can find me on my blog at nightmaremaven.com on morbidlybeautiful.com as a contributing writer and on their youtube channel now as a contributing host and you can find me on patreon.com slash nightmaremaven if you want to check that out and support the channel I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday through Friday. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay strange. Bye.